Hello everyone. My name is Siddhant Wadwani. I'm a project lead asset manager at Newful Digital, managing assets across several teams within Epac Engineering. As part of today's session at Testflix 2022, I would be talking about test dominance in the era of micro frontends. So let's get started. As part of the agenda for today, I would be covering what are micro frontends, seeing them in action, benefits and challenges of using them, unit testing, contact testing and end-to-end -end testing strategy, followed by a quick live demo. and towards the end i'll leave you with some key takeaways so to begin with what according to you are micro frontends well this buzzword is not at all new as mfes were first tried and tested by wix back in 2013 and later by thoughtworks in 2016 so while i wait for you to respond in the chat window let me highlight an incident that i recall from earlier days this very same question was asked by my manager mr shikant while me and my colleagues were in a conference room and not knowing much about micro front ends then my answer to this was the future of front end web development my colleague seema she replied it could be a design approach for front end applications on the other hand suresh as usual was feeling sleepy and when asked he replied hastily that it's definitely a minified front end for ants and like you can see we lost suresh that day so as we all are here together and i have this topic fresh on my mind i don't wish to lose any of you so All eyes on the screen while I delve into the most exciting stuff. According to Martin Fowler, chief scientist at ThoughtWorks, micro frontends are an architectural style where independently deliverable frontend applications are composed into a greater whole. Now I know all these words are bouncing off your heads, so let me explain this in a bit simpler manner. With the explosion of digital transformation, many enterprises started investing in the web to scale their business in terms of growth. This indirectly led to bloated monoliths, which became very difficult to manage over time. Developers and principal architects explored ways to break the code apart in terms of frontend and backend, while that brought in the idea of microservices and, most importantly, micro frontends. So, in a nutshell, micro frontends are the frontend counterpart to the backend side microservices architecture. Here, the web application is broken down into its features, and each feature is owned frontend to backend, vertically split by different teams. This ensures that every feature is developed, tested, and deployed from independently from other features. It decreases the cross-team dependency, while at the same time, it also decreases the organizational drag on the innovation that any one team is able to achieve. Furthermore, micro frontends are, of course, a benefit to large organizations with multiple teams and complex frontend needs. Monolithic frontends, on the other hand, slow down the forward progress that micro frontends bring. and micro frontends help in eliminating such bottlenecks while democratizing the ux development process let's take a quick look at certain enterprises that are leveraging the benefits of micro frontends to maintain their competitive edge these are the enterprises that have shortlisted that have been successful using micro frontends again mfes can be implemented in different ways using runtime integration called mo module federation build time or compile time integration iframe integration etc but I recommend you to explore these all by yourself and also read about how each of these organizations have taken their journey forward. Let's take an example of micro micro front ends using the browse page of Netflix. We assume there are four teams A B C and D each working on a different feature with different tech stack. Assume team A is working on the featured mod featured set of movies using Angular JS. Team B is using React JS to display the recommended set of movies. Team C is focusing on the profile page working on Vue.js and team D is working on the search module feature using vanilla javascript and jquery. Now each of these teams is working on its individual feature and they'll be deploying and testing and developing them individually. So let's have a look how testing dominates in this field in this era of micro frontends. Before that we'll look into the benefits and challenges micro frontends has to offer. A quick note avoid forming horizontal teams instead have vertical teams. such that they own their own front end and back end of each feature independently and that's where testing and deployment must also fit into each vertical some key benefits of using micro front ends are support code and style isolation Indi individual development teams can choose their own technology which means tech agnostic development and deployment are very quick as micro front ends use and leverage the benefits of micro services as well reducing the drastic dependencies that it has to offer it also helps in continuous deployment high build resilience and maintenance is also critical as individual teams own specific areas guess what 
testing also becomes simpler as for every small change, you don't have to test the entire application. Like we know, every application has its sets of pros and cons. So there are certain challenges with MFEs as well. So testing MFE integrations or end-to-end -end testing the application as a whole is indeed difficult. User experience may also become a challenge if individual teams go in their own direction, causing redundant and duplicate data. Hence, UX consistency is very important. There should be a common medium where UX is not compromised. Collaboration at the same time is also very important where teams must come together and have a common understanding to eliminate such risk. Moving on to why it is important for you to understand about testing micro front ends. Well, I have a meme over here. So one must focus on testing from ground up where developers perform unit testing and test professionals focus on contract level component integration and end to end level layers of testing. The testing strategy would be pretty much similar to what you already have in your current framework. I assume microservices, but most importance must be given to component level testing of each individual micro front end. You can continue to use Selenium Cypress robot framework or any other test framework, but I would recommend don't waste much time and effort in testing the end to end integration. Rather focus only on the logical and critical flows. Moving on to unit testing, a single page application, it is very much similar to microservices based testing. However, it has two notable ex exceptions. First one being importing micro front ends. As unit tests run locally, accessing multiple micro front ends could be an issue. Thus, it is important to have only one micro front end import and mock the remaining micro front ends. Second, system.import. Test, it is ideal to be asynchronous. As system.import, we all know, returns a promise. Hence, mo mocking both system.js as well as the module that you're importing would be ideal. If each project mocks every other MFE, it is possible that mocks will go out of sync. And for this, it is recommended to use the shared mocks approach, where keeping the mocks in sync would not only require one change, it would avoid committing multiple changes and mocking the, mocking the behavior across multiple repositories. My recommendation is to use Jest for unit testing as it also helps with JavaScript side of code and includes React applications. Moving on to an example where in general, you must test each component and make assertions only about the logic contained within that component, as we discussed earlier. For instance, let's pretend that this is the app component, how it looks like. Then the only thing that you need to test is the hierarchy that is correct. This approach is called shallow rendering or component mocking testing strategy. Although it is not recommended by React themselves, but I believe it's the best approach to test such scenarios. So in contract testing, to help ensure our mocks are an accurate representation of a consumer or provider, we can also adopt the consumer driven contract testing approach where the mock consumer makes the request and the provider receives the response. In this design, the consumer themselves define the contract and provide mocks for a provider to test against their pipeline. By doing this, we can be definitely more confident that our changes won't break on production. Looking into end to end testing, we use a recurring pipeline pattern to trigger the deployment and testing of micro front ends. Each independent micro front end targets a single repository that contains a suite of end to end test. Once a front micro front end has been deployed to development environment, it triggers the end to end test, which could be either the entire set or a subset. And depending on the pass fail criteria, the changes are further deployed onto the next stage. That could be the staging environment and then onto production. That's how the process goes. However, in case there are any failures, a trigger approach is used where we trigger the failure uh, uh, message upstream and a rollback is performed. So that's the failure mechanism that we can implement. A more robust approach to this sort of test automation would be the ability to run the test without any deployments being made to the physical environment. So folks, I think it's enough of theory now. How about some live demo? As part of this demo, you can see that I have implemented different micro front ends, all hosted on a Kubernetes cluster. The container MFE is the host application or parent MFE, which contains another MFE called the domain MFE. Then we have the cart MFE and the payment MFE. To implement these, I have made use of two integration approaches. First one being module federation, also known as runtime integration. And the second one, iframe integration approach. Above that, I have also made use of error boundaries to handle cases like when an MFE goes down. 
this would help prevent the entire application from crashing the container mfe cart mfe and the domain mfe have been implemented using the runtime integration approach where communication takes place via custom events on the other hand the payment mfe has been implemented using the iframe integration approach where communication takes place via browser api calls so let's take a quick look at the code as you can see in the container mfe plugins.js file on line number 4 is where i have imported the module federation plugin and on line numbers 12 and 13 is where the other mfes are being referenced similarly on the left hand side we see the cart mfe plugins.js file where on line number 11 is where we are exposing the cart mfe also the name that you specified for the mfe must match the reference name and the url specified in the container or host application as we can see in the app.js file this is how the payment mfe has been implemented using the iframe integration approach i believe that's all for the code now let's have a quick look at how these can be tested ideally so as a rule of thumb it is important to test each and every mfe in isolation so the very first check that we do is to test if all mfes are loading fine on the container mfe.com as you can see the chrome web developer tools has been opened and i've searched for the remote entity.js file for these mfes as we can see the domain hyphen mfe that is the domain specific mfe and cart mfe both are loading fine which means mfes are loading fine on the host application right so next we move on to testing the domain mfe in isolation here we can test with a couple of inputs like leaving the domain name blank where we have a couple of validations maybe entering html tags or having spaces in between and we test the functional behavior around the team boundaries and across team boundaries that's when we move on to testing the integration of the domain mfe along with the container mfe so your let's test with a couple of valid inputs taking test type as a domain name that i wish to search for let's see the inputs so here we can see the list of domains has appeared right so this is where the integration can be tested between the domain mfe and the container mfe next moving on to testing the domain mfe versus cart mfe how the integration works so as we had discussed earlier the communication is via custom events once you add or delete a domain name and you see you can see that reflecting in the cart checkout once this bit of testing is complete you can click on checkout that's where we see the payment mfe which if you earlier recall we discussed has been implemented using the iframe integration approach here you need to test the in, the communication between the cart mfe and the payment mfe how would you do that so you can see the domain that you have added to the cart that exact details needs to show up in the payment mfe so we know yes the communication is working fine next you can test a couple of error cases or negative checks for the card card details that you enter for for uh, the time sake let's enter our valid inputs and you can click on make payment your the payment successful message needs to be tested on the container mfe once correct details have been entered in the cart so after seeing this demo on how testing is dominating in the era of micro front ends let's move on to some key takeaways it's important to build a comprehensive automation test suite for each micro front end like we saw running tests in isolation inside and across team boundaries is beneficial you shadow dom whenever possible to avoid the leaking style problem the same strategy that you used in monoliths for testing microservices can also be used for testing micro front ends individually however certain clauses come with it focus on the unit and component level testing more as compared to integration testing and like you can see at the bottom left testing builds are very important regular check ins with de developers designers business stakeholders and other testers is very necessary in order to reduce the risk of failures evaluate test flows and possibilities early devise the best possible testing and deployment strategies deliver features with optimum quality and release in an agile manner so here are some useful links for your reference and well folks that's all thank you so much for listening so curiously i hope you all found this session really insightful don't forget to scan the qr code to share your feedback i'd really appreciate that also feel free to connect with me on linkedin and in case you have any queries i'd be happy to address them before i bid adieu a special thanks to the test drive community for giving me this wonderful opportunity to enjoy the rest of the talks at 
Test Flix 2022. Stay home and stay safe.